who tried with fire might be found in the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, whom though now you see him not, yet believe it, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That's a lot of reading. I didn't mean to keep standing so long. Maybe you can be seated. God help us tonight as we study your word. Amen. Praise God. I didn't intend to get you to stand in that, but I, I'm, uh, I'm grateful y'all are in reverence towards the Lord's word, and I'm sure that pleases him. And uh, praise God. We're going to look at verse 3 again. It's, he said, Peter said, we have a lively hope. Amen. Praise God. That kind of sounds strange the way it's worded there, but it's it's talking about, uh, if you look at the opposite of that, a dead hope would be a, a lost hope, a hope that you don't have no more. Amen. You actually have, the Christian has a hope that is enduring, and it's not going away. Amen. Amen. It's, it's a living hope. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And it comes by Jesus Christ being raised from the dead. Amen. Amen. By his sacrifice for us. Praise God. Brother Roland, did you get those? Get a copy there? I'm going to cover some of the ones in the red print below the scripture. Amen. Verse 4 said that we have an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. It says it fades not away, the inheritance that we have. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Torres. Praise God. That's a good man. I love Brother Torres. Praise God. But we have an inheritance that, that is not going to fade away. Amen. Strong says that means it's perpetual. Amen. That means it's without ending. It's not going to end. Amen. Praise God. You all say praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're not preaching fairy tales to you when we talk to you about Jesus. Amen. We're talking about something that is alive. The hope that we have is alive and it's not going away. Amen. It's not going to end. Amen. He's given us something that we can hope in uh, that is perpetual. Amen. Without end. Praise God. John chapter 14. This is a very familiar scripture. Praise God. Amen. I, I, I met a new convert here today. Over here. Look at you. It's, it's, you know him, don't you? <laughs> no. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for them. Amen. But, but uh, John talks about what lies before us in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, I believe it was. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, and that's what we are, his disciples, right? Amen. He was fixing to go away. They were fixing to lose the, at least the sight of the best thing that ever happened in their lives. Amen. Praise God. The one that was doing all the healing and curing and all the good things. And uh, he was fixing to leave them and he was preparing them. Amen. And you know what? Even though he was preparing, it still blew them away. You know, we hear about this all the time. If we could just let it sink in, really, sincerely, what we are involved in. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, speaking to his disciples there as well as to us. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Then he said, I go to prepare a place for you. How many believe that? Yes. He's done that, hasn't he? Yes. I go to prepare a place for you. He's telling them right there he's going. Amen. They, they don't understand it all. 
Praise God. He said, I go prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I really believe that's going to happen. <laughs> that's going to happen. We've been preaching about it for years. We've been preaching about it for years. That's going to happen. And I believe, I know I don't know the day or the hour. I know that. But you got to realize, you know, that that the Lord, the same word that tells us you don't know the day or the hour, it does tell you, you can tell when it, whenever the big tree begins to bloom, you know that, you know, summer's near. You know, and he, he says when you begin to see all these things that he talked about in like Matthew 24, that's one place, it's in uh, the Gospels and other places as well, but when you see these things, you know that it's near even at the door. I believe the second coming of Jesus is right at the door. Amen. I was witnessing to somebody a couple of days ago, and they they asked the question. You know, I didn't even bring it up. It was just I, I just had such a good time talking to them. They asked me, uh, you know, how did you get in this? You know, and they don't go to one of our churches or nothing like that. They, I was, and man, a lot, a lot of people asked me that. You know. And I told them, I said, well, I didn't have anybody uh, invite me to church. I wasn't going to church. Nobody had been trying to convince me to go to church. I wasn't raised going to church. And I was doing all kinds of stuff I shouldn't have been doing. But I didn't even have a real conscience, I don't think. Maybe I had more of one than I realized. But I... Uh, I, I, in 1979, I came in. I was running a ranch and uh, for a fella over in Temple. And I was out at the edge of town. I was, it was actually Frank Mabers' uh, ranch that he has. I was running it and taking care of his stuff. And uh, anyway, I come in after a day's work and came and I sat down in front of the TV. And it was the evening news that was coming on. And I was watching the evening news. And as it came on, it was 1979. It was the Iran crisis. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I, folks, I couldn't tell you the, the smallest scripture in the Bible, which is Jesus well. <laughs> I couldn't tell you that one. I, you know, I hadn't read the Bible, studied the Bible, had nobody telling me about the Bible or nothing. But I looked at that on that television, that Iran crisis, and as I was watching that, something that never had happened before happened to me. And it was not an audible voice, but just as clear as day, Brother Moody, it said, you need to check where you're living at because you're living in the end time. That came to me so clear. You know, it's, it, it stirred me. I didn't, I didn't know nothing about the end time, you know, scenarios that were going to be going on. According to the Bible, I hadn't read the Bible. But I'll tell you what, I found me one. I knew I needed to find that book. And I started off in Genesis, and I couldn't make hide nor hair of any of it. You know, it just sounded like a business. Like, it was like reading another language, you know. I didn't understand anything, but I finally fumbled around there and that, and I saw some red print, and I started thinking, you know, you know, people talk about Jesus, don't they? You drive by and there's a church building with Jesus on it, this and that, and uh, I, I, uh, I, I thought, I finally figured out that red print. That's where Jesus. They talk about Jesus, and I got to reading, and when I time I got from Matthew into the to the 24th chapter and started reading that sister Lane's what had I saw on that television I was reading it on those pages of that Bible chapter 24 man you know that's exactly what I saw and you know what that was you know when God speaks to you he doesn't have to speak audibly to you I've only had that happen to me one time 
40 some 50 years living for the Lord since 1979. You know? But God speaks to you by giving you revelation. He it's like a light turning on. It's like He shows you something. You see something you didn't see before. Amen. And every time people see something, it's not always God. And they'll just put that out there too. But this was in total harmony with the Word of God. And you know, you say, Brother Rabbit, that was 1979. You said Jesus is coming. Hey, it started before then. It started back in, I believe, my opinion, I believe it started in 1948 when Israel became a nation again. And we're at the closing hours of this thing. Amen. We're at the closing hours. Uh, you know, I, but anyway, so I got to start telling this gentleman, you know, uh, about Jesus is going to come. He's going to come. And I, I'm, I'm grateful that he gave me the opportunity to come. Amen. Yeah. I want you to know I went through some great trials after that. That devil did not want me to make it. And you know what? He don't want you to make it either. And, uh, but I made it. I'm still working on it. Damn. I'm still full time. Yeah, I'm still working on it. Still, <laughs> I'm a full time job, but I'm still here. Amen. Amen. Right? I've had my battles. There's been times I had a spiritual bloody nose before, but you know, I'm still in the fight. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that you're still in the fight. You wouldn't be here tonight if you wasn't. But Jesus is coming. The day is going to come that He is going to come. That's not necessarily what I was wanting to preach about or teach about tonight. But <clears throat> praise God. We have a hope. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Did we finish those scriptures, Brother Earl? Okay. Let's go back there. Praise God. He said, and whether I go, oh, and if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's talking about the rapture. We call it the catching away. That's what it talks about in Thessalonians. I receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And then he says, and whither I go you know, and the way you know. And then they have a discussion. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's nobody that gets reconciled to God other than through that sacrifice. Amen. That's, right. That's the only way to be ready when Jesus comes. That's, right. That's why we're always preaching Acts 2.38. Amen. Amen. When you hear about the message about Jesus, we're telling you what the scripture says to do upon believing in Jesus that we have to repent. Amen. That's what I did. Amen. Whenever I heard it. Nobody, you know, nobody told me to, nobody told me that I needed to put the tobacco away and the alcohol. Nobody told me I wouldn't go to church when nobody was preaching to me. But when I started reading that book, I started getting convictions. <laughs> you know what I did? I just went and bought me three brand new cans of Copenhagen. They tell me that stuff's pretty high now. You know? But I had just went and brought me three. That was my way of getting off cigarettes, you know? I would switch back and forth, you know? I, I'd do the cigarettes for a while, and I'd, and I'd want to put it away because i get short of breath. And man, am I glad I stopped. Yeah. You know how many years I saved myself? Yeah. Huh? I would have had a hard time breathing tonight yeah. if I'd have kept that up. And I'd probably have a lip rotten off, you know, from all the snuff and stuff that I was dipping. But I was one of those kind of people, you know, and... Uh, you know, they don't tell them about what the alcohol would do and stuff. You know, a lot of people have gotten cirrhosis of the liver from drinking a bunch like that. Right. But nonetheless, uh, whenever I started reading this book, I uh, I started feeling convicted. And I, I what I did is I went over to a trash can. And I, I wouldn't go to church yet. I was just reading that book. And I dumped it out. And you know what? I tried that many times. It always kept picking it back up. Not dumping it out. I just wouldn't buy it anymore for like three or four days, you know, because yeah. I was having my New Year's resolution or something like that. But anyway, I'd always pick it back up. But you know what? 
Count the years from 1979 to the day, and I ain't had another drop of it. No more cigarettes, no more alcohol, because you know what I was doing? And I didn't even know what that was, what I was doing, other than I was feeling like I shouldn't be doing that. You know? There were some other things that I was doing, too. And after a while, I went to church for a little bit, and uh, <clears throat> I went to a church, a little small church, uh, that my kin folks had went to. That's the only place I knew where to go. I got the feeling like I needed to go to church. And, uh, but after reading Matthew 24, you know, I kind of got afraid to go, didn't know where to go to church, because Jesus warned in that chapter that be careful that nobody deceives you. And I, I was afraid of being deceived. And you know what? You ought to be afraid of being deceived. Amen. Amen. But anyway, uh, I started going to that church, and it wasn't like this group here or this organization we're in or this experience that we experienced. It was just kind of a quiet thing, you know. But anyway, I went there because my kin folks went there. My grandma was 30 years a secretary of that church, so we went there. I had kin folks there. And... Uh, <clears throat> So I, there was things I was doing in my life, and, and I, I called that preacher up one night, and I said, uh, is there anything wrong with this? And uh, he said to me, he said, oh, we used to not do that, but you know, time changes, people change. <laughs> but you know what? I was reading this. And it was getting a hold of me. You know, I didn't fuss about it or anything like that. I found out later when I got the Holy Ghost, that was wrong. <laughs> you know? And I put it away. Amen. Praise God. Can I tell you, you got to come to that place where you're ready to put stuff away. Amen. And not just put stuff away, but you got to invite His stuff inside of your life. Amen. Praise. It's not just putting off. Amen. It's not just putting off the old man, it's putting on the new man, which is created after the image of him who created us. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. But we have a living hope. Amen. And Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way to get out of here safely. Amen. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he is the way, and he has promises to people uh, he has given us a hope, and that hope is not going to go away. It don't matter how tough it gets here. Amen. You can rest assured that you have hope on the other side. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it's difficult here. I've had some difficulty here. Amen. But, you know, people liked me before I got in the truth. I'm talking about people that used to know me. I had, uh, whenever I was just a character, you know what I mean? I was out there. You know, I, I, I wasn't the best person when I was out there. And I had, I had a lot of friends, but I found out whenever I turned to the Lord, I was crazy back then. But they thought I was all right. When I turned to the Lord, they all of a sudden thought I was crazy. <laughs> Because when you really get in this and you really do it right, listen to me, you're going to be different than what you were. Amen. And they were all like I was, except for a few that's come along. You know, there's some that's embraced and come, and I'm thankful for that. Praise God. But I had, when I first came to the Lord, I, I, my family thought I was a nut. They did. They thought I was out in left field. They did because, you know, my little sister uh, went and was telling this lady, my little sister was for me, she, at that point, <laughs> but she was telling this lady she worked with, you ought to see my brother. He is, he is really changed. He has really turned around, you know. And I was a long way from being an apostolic at that point. But from where I came from, you know. I had come a long way. And uh, I had people, though, that that once I found the truth of what the Word of God really said about being born again of the water spirit and living 
a, a holy life, a godly life, a, a life transformed, you know, a life according to the word of God. That's when people started jumping ship. Amen. That's when people started thinking that, you know what? You're, you're, you're going out there, you know? And they're, when I stopped doing some things, they were all right with me with the nightclubs. But when I started, you know, backing away from all that kind of stuff, and, you know, and watching inappropriate things, yeah. amen, yeah. praise God, they thought I was, uh, you know, uh, in a cult or something. They don't do that no more. They don't do that no more. But for a while, when I first got in church, they jumped ship from me. And they left me by myself. I mean, people forsook me when I first got into the truth. And I had a dream one night, and I know all dreams are not of God, but I had a dream one night that I was at a store, and this was so real. This was, and I'm I'm just telling it as a dream. It, it actually happened, but it happened at this time when everything uh, was going kind of against me, except for the church, the church running, you know, but I'm talking about people that knew me all my life and stuff. They thought I done got radical, you know, and I did get radical. I was radical about Jesus, amen? Are you radical about Jesus? Amen. You ought to be radical about Jesus, amen? Praise God. That don't mean you treat people bad or you know, treat them harshly or anything, but he ought to do a radical change in your life when he, whenever you come to him. Amen. Old things are passed away, the Bible says, and all things become new. And we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But I, uh, I, uh, I had just turned in such a drastic way in my life that, people, that it kind of threw people, I guess. But I had this dream that I was, I heard, a, I was in a convenience store down the road here, and I heard, or heard a big commotion of people out front, and I went out in there, I had two dreams like this, but this was one that I had while I was going through all this trouble, and there was people all out there, and I looked, and I looked and I saw this being coming down out of, out of heaven. It was an angel that had a wings, but it was it was a being that came down out of heaven, and it I was this just I was in a big crowd of people, and whenever that being came down, it just hoovered. It was an angel, but it, it hoovered over that congregation like it was looking for somebody. And all of a sudden, like it's like my eyes just contacted with his eyes, and whenever he, uh, whenever it did, he reached down and he grabbed me by the arm, and I just. He pulled me and started taking off. And I went up and up and up, and all around me was pitch black. I'm telling you, there's darkness all around me. Amen. And I don't know, I just, throughout this time that I was going through all this stuff, I just felt like something was holding me. I really did. I felt like, you know, I don't know why this is not destroying me. All this stuff I'm going through. I mean, it was coming from here, there, and yonder, everywhere, you know? I can understand what Joe felt. He said, I, I've looked before, and I can't find him here. I look over here to this side and that side of the house. I can't find him anywhere. But there was something that was telling me on the inside I, that he knows where I'm at, you know? He, God knows right where I'm at. And, and anyway, I had that dream, and then that that angel let go of me. And it was, like I said, it was pitch black all around me. And all of a sudden, I fell, you can imagine a pea, I've got the size of it like a pea, but I fell on this giant pair of hands. Just giant pair of hands. And the Lord was letting me know that though there's darkness all around you, I've got you, I've got you in my hands, amen? And you know what? That's where each and every one of us are when we live for the Lord. It doesn't matter what goes on in this life. Things happen in this life sometimes. Amen? But storms don't last forever. 
Aren't you glad of that? Amen. If you're in a storm tonight, I want you to know something. It hasn't shook God. And it hasn't done anything to get rid of the thing that he has reserved for you in heaven. Amen? If you will just hang on to him. Amen? Stay in there with him. Amen? He will take you through it. Amen? And it looks dark sometimes. Amen? I've been through it. Amen? That's not the only trial uh, that I've ever been through. And that's not the only trial that you've been through. And it probably won't be the last trial you ever encounter in this earth. Amen? But the thing about a Christian is, is a Christian has something laid up for them on the other side. I hope you listen to what I'm saying tonight. Amen. A Christian has a hope that is not going to fade away. Amen. It is perpetual. It is not about this life here, though I believe God wants you to have good here. Okay? But it's not always good here. They just lost a little boy the other day in a drowning situation. That's not good. That's heartbreaking, heart wrenching. Right. Amen. But you need to pray for those folks, amen, that are that are facing that. That they can get a glimpse that there's more to it than just today. Yeah. It's that's that's a hard thing to have to go through. It's difficult. I see other people going through difficult situations. But I'm telling you something. Hanging in here. Staying close to the Lord. Amen? Right, right. I want you to know something. We got a hope that is laid up for us. Amen? Amen. We got something to look forward to. Amen? Amen? And if God allows us. Amen? If he doesn't stop a trial. Don't give up on God. Amen? Amen. God, you, that's where that word, to me, that's where that word trust comes in. Yes. Amen. You know, that is a branch to me of trust, of faith, brothers. Trust is a branch of faith. Amen. It is something about faith. Faith is the, I think Brother Moody quoted that the other day. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If I have the elders obtained a good report, my, to me, the best definition of faith uh, is over there in the book of Romans where it talks about Abraham, who against hope, he believed in hope, that he might be the father of many nations. Amen? amen. Praise God. He has faith. Amen? And you know what? There are so many things, reasons why things uh, are not corrected the way you think that they ought to be corrected. We have our ideals how things need to be corrected a lot of times or how it's supposed to work. This is how God's supposed to do it. <laughs> I was up here some months ago. I don't mean to stay on me, but I'm just, I'm just telling you my experiences. And I went for a couple of years praying about my heart issues. And I got to the point uh, on J January the 23rd, uh, 2023, I was right here, and I came down to the church, and I had to pray, and I was asking God, and I said, you know, I got to the point where I couldn't walk from here to my truck without having to stop because of the pressure. I was having pressure inside my, in my chest, and uh, I was walking this floor, and I was telling Jesus, I felt his presence. I was, I'm telling you, I got in the presence of the Lord. I was praying. I would speak in tongues in the Holy Ghost. You know, I knew he was, I told him, I said, Lord, I know you're hearing me. I know you're hearing me. And you know what, Lord? You know by inside, I really do believe, I really do believe that by your stripes I was healed. I really am convinced about that. And you know what? I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm just walking just like this. I said, Lord, I don't want to go to the doctor. <laughs> so I told him, brother, I don't want to go to the doctor. I told him that morning, I said, I'll do it if that's what you want me to do, if that's the way you want to feel. But I don't want to go, and I had no intention on going. I had no intention of going, but I told him, I said, Lord, if you don't do something pretty quick, I'm fixing to not be here. As if he didn't know, you know. <laughs> I said, I'm fixing. 
to not be here anymore. And, you know, I wasn't afraid of dying. I, I don't feel afraid of dying because I feel, I feel like I'm close to the Lord. I really do. I, I, if, if I'm not, I don't know how to get any closer to Him. You know, I'm trying my best. Are you trying your best? Amen. Amen. Try your best. But I was walking in here, and I was praying. I said, Lord, if you don't do something quick, you know, I'm fixing not be here. That's the very words I told him this morning. I said, I'm fixing not be here anymore. <laughs> and uh, so I stepped out the door, and when I got home, I got a phone call. Johnny Collins back there. Did you, Johnny? Did this happen, Johnny? Okay. Johnny called me, and he said, Aunt Bruce uh, in the hospital, and she's asking for her pastor. Well, I pastored her for like, how many years? 15 years? I'm just guessing. 15 years. I cannot recall. If I did, I don't recall it. I, I have never, to my knowledge, my remembrance, ever went to the hospital and prayed for her. I've never seen her in the hospital and had to go pray for her. I pastored her all those years. She stayed at home. She got to the point where she couldn't come to church. But I uh, I would go and visit her and pray with her at home and, and you know, do pastoral stuff and watch over the flock there. And, and But anyway, Johnny called me when I, I had just gotten out of that prayer, you know, and told the Lord that. And I got that phone call. Uh, Aunt Bruce wanting you to come and pray for her. She's asking for her pastor. Will you come pray for her? She's in the ER. So I go over there. And and, and I, it takes, I have to park out in the front of the hospital and, and I have to go over those stairs because the emergency parking lot is full. And I'll go over there and take them back three times. I walk away and I have to stop because I feel that pressure build up real big. And then I, when, I, when it let up a little bit, I walk a little bit more. And I, I finally got to the stairs. I, I was on the stairs for about five minutes because it wasn't letting up. <laughs> yeah. I never did have no pain. But I finally went in the ER and there was three people in front of me. So I had to wait until they got down. And uh, uh, I was kind of leaning against the wall at that time. Praise God. But anyway, they, they got out of the way and I went up there. And by this time, you know, I still wasn't hurting. But I was... I, was, I mean, something was happening. I was shutting down. <laughs> this engine was shutting down. It, you know? and, I, and I knelt down to that little hole that they got in. I said, ma'am, <laughs> there's a lady back there. I came to pray for her, but I think I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Sure enough, they put me back there, and I was. I was having a heart attack. I had a, the main order, the AR, 100% closed. And then I had the other one, 95% closed. And I was having a heart attack. And anyway, they went through all of that right there. You know what? God, that's not the way I ask you to do it. <laughs> I did ask him. I said, Lord, cleanse my arteries out. You know, I didn't ask him that over the time. But you know what? That lady, she went on to be with the Lord. But her last act in life was saving her pastor. That, how do you like to go to heaven with that on your record? <laughs> Amen. But they took me in there. They did open heart surgery on me. And you know what? The thing about it is, is I never, I never had any pain meds or anything. I never had any pain meds. Uh, they gave me a Tylenol drip. That's what they gave me. That's what they told me. And I never had any pain meds. I woke up out of surgery. And they said, Brother Adam, or Mr. Adam, what is, what's your pain level from 1 to 10? And I said, I couldn't talk because I had this thing in my mouth, down my throat, you know, they knock you out. And, and I said, it's zero. I didn't have no pain at all. I just didn't. Uh -huh. And I haven't had none to this day. Never had no pain. Praise God. But that was God doing all of that. Right. They, you know, one doctor had said, well, what are you hiding from us? You know, what are you hiding from me? I don't know what she thought about taking drugs or what. I said, I got people praying for me. Amen. <laughs> people praying for me. Amen. Prayer kept me. Amen. And God did what I'm asking, but he did it his way. Right. And he did it on his time frame. Right. And I'm telling you, I haven't witnessed uh, 
to so many people in all my life as I witnessed to when they put me in the hospital. I'm telling you, God opened so many doors. Yeah. Amen. 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 God has a reason. You may not always understand why things are not changing that you want to see. But that's where trust comes in. Amen. Amen. I was believing God. I'm telling God, I believe you. Amen. You know what? You have to learn to trust God. Amen. When you don't understand it and you don't see, you've got to trust. God hears me. I know you hear me. And I trust in you. And I don't know why things are going on in my life like they are. You might think, you know. God knows. Nothing takes him by surprise. He is completely aware of everything and anything you face and go through. Amen. He said the hairs on your head are numbered. Amen. He knows them. He even knows what you think. We just don't see the bigger picture a lot of times. You understand? We don't see what he sees. But he has showed us enough if we will get a hold of it and trust. Amen. Amen. It's not about this life as much as it is of what's coming. That's right. Amen. He wants to help you here. Yes, he does. He, does. he, does. he wants to help you here and he will be there for you. Mm -hmm. But there's time. God told Abraham, he said, you and Sarah, y'all are going to have a child. He believed it. He believed it. You know, and that's why he's called the father of faith. But you know what? The next year, they hadn't had a child yet. Right. And <laughs> he got to the point, he said, ah, this is the way we're going to do it. Sarah just gave me some advice. <laughs> you know, get Hagar. And we're going to, that's the way God's going to do it. You figure out how God's going to do it. Can I tell you? Uh -oh. If you try to figure God out, you might mess things up. That's right. Amen. Because it, all he needs really? to bring trouble to himself. Amen. Right. By trying to figure out. God had a plan. God had a reason why he was doing it the way that he did it. Amen. Right. Praise God. And he knows everything about you yeah. and what you need. Amen. Right. And where you're at. Yes, sir. Praise God. And he also, he also has the right to say no. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. We don't have to hear that sometimes. Mm -hmm. but, but he does have the right to say no. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But one thing we can know is that he loves us. Mm -hmm. And he cares about us. He wants good for us. Amen. Amen. We, have, we have an inheritance. Verse 4 said, 1 Peter 4, 1 and 4. An inheritance is incorruptible. It's undefiled, and it's not going to fade away. And it's reserved in heaven for us. Then he said this, we read this, wherein ye greatly rejoice. There's that clock. Amen. Though you greatly rejoice, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. If need be? Is there ever a time when this need be that I have trouble? That's what the scripture says. Yeah. If need be, you are in heaviness. Heaviness? I thought the joy of the Lord was my strength. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. Praise God. Praise God. Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. In other words, trials, manifold. Manifold, many different trials, amen? That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, amen? In other words, Jesus is coming. Don't forget what you got on the other side, amen? Amen. Come on, there's something there for you. Amen. Whether if you're flying high all the days you have on this earth, God bless you, fly high. But if you're going through things, there's more to it than this day. 
There's more to it. Amen? And then it, and it has all to do with what you believe. It has all to do with what you believe. He says this about, uh, about what you believe. He says, whom having not seen. Has anybody here seen Jesus? I've never seen him to my knowledge. I've never seen him. I've read his word. I've heard preaching about him. And you know what? I believe it's the truth. Do you believe it's the truth? Yeah. How much you believe it's the truth? Amen. Whom having not seen, you love. Amen. What you love, you embrace, don't you? Amen. That's why John said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right? All that's in the world, lust of the eye, love of the flesh, pride of life, and all the Father, but of the world. The world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God. Amen. People that love God more than they love the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, all, all this stuff that's in the world. We talked about that last week, remember? All that's in the world, the world, the corruption that's in the world through lust. Remember us covering that? Amen. Praise God. Whom having not seen, you love, though now you see him not, yet, yet what? Come on. You're fully persuaded that what he has promised, he's able also to perform. That's what Abraham had inside of him. I believe Jesus is coming. Come on, I believe he has a place prepared for those who love him. Amen? Amen? Come on, this is not just a Tinkerbell story with me. This is reality. Amen. This is Amen. real. Amen? This is really going to happen. Amen? If you really believe this, you're going to get ready. Come on, you're going to get ready. But if you... It depends on your faith, according to your faith, be it up to you. If you don't really believe from your heart that, that this is real and that Jesus is coming, you're going to cleave to this world. Come on, because that's how you're going you're to feel like this is all I got. Amen? Right? But when you really believe, come on, even through the trials, even through the hard times, amen, you're able to rejoice. With joy unspeakable and full of glory, and people may not understand how you can do it, it's because you see something that not everybody else sees. And you have an inheritance. Amen. You have an inheritance. You know it's not always going to be like this. God's going to come through for you here. Amen. Praise God. And He will. Amen. But He may not always do it the way you think. He told one of the churches in the book of Revelation, you'll have tribulation ten days. Be faithful to death. Amen. And I'll give you a crown of life. Sometimes the way we're delivered is by getting out of here. I'm serious. Praise God. Listen to me. I went through it. I hate quit talking about me, but that's my experience. I don't talk about your experience. Amen. I went through that surgery and everything. And I never had a lick of pain. I'm, I'm not lying about that. God is my witness. Amen. I never had no pain. No pain. Man. No none of that stuff. Amen. And you know what? That was just God. I think God just showed me. You see, in your time of desperation, when it looks like you ought to be full of pain and full of all kinds of anxiety, you don't have to be whenever you're linked up to me. I can take care of you in those hours and in that time. Amen. I'll take care of you. You'll be helped with a little help in that time Daniel was, uh, wrote about. Amen. 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 God will be with his people. Amen? Amen. Don't try to figure him out. Just focus on obeying him. Amen. And then you know what? Even though you're going through a lot of stuff, keep praising him. Amen? Amen. Keep worshiping him. Amen? Amen? Keep lifting him up. Amen? Because you have something that's not going away on the other side. Amen? Amen. It's reserved for you. Amen. Amen. Amen? That word reserved right there Strong says it means it's guarded. It's guarded. Amen. It's protected. Amen. God's not going to let anything happen to it. Amen. He called you by his gospel. Amen. He, he filled you with the Holy Ghost. You was born again of the water spirit and you're walking with him and nothing's going to take that away from you. Amen. And nothing can pluck you out of his hand. Amen. Right. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
had five men. Nothing can pluck you out of his hand. Now, I tell you, I was going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. And that's hard to do in five minutes. But, you know what we need to learn to do? We need to see what God has for us. We need to remember that. Amen? Paul said, I, I mean, Peter said, I, 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 I'm writing to you to stir up your, your mind by, by remembrance. Amen? We need to remember, amen, what God has promised to those that love him. I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those that love him. Amen. But those things are revealed unto us by his spirit. Amen. Praise God. That's why you can see people shouting in the midst of the heaviness and the trials. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, they're going through stuff. Yeah, it's real. Amen. But they got a glimpse of something. They got a glimpse of something. Oh, God, open our eyes to see. Amen. Come on, open our eyes to see, Lord. Amen. We, we talked about that the other day. The angels, the hosts that are in here with us. Open his eyes that he might see, Lord, that there's more that's for us than they that be against us. But listen to me, it's not just the host of heaven, it's all the promises that God has for us when we love him and live for him. He's got good stuff waiting for you. He's got good stuff waiting for you. One of these days, <laughs> there's not going to be any more crying. There's not going to be any more tears. Now, come on, the former things, that's the things right now. The former things are passed away. Amen. It's going to be good, 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 and good, and better. Amen. That's right. So what we got to do is we got to learn to praise Him. We want the gifts of the Spirit to move and operate. We're down to two minutes. We want the gifts of the Spirit. We want God to move. Right. Okay? Praise God. Focus your attention on what God has promised you. The good. Trust in Him when you don't understand. Amen. When you come and gather, praise Him for His goodness and what He has promised you. I want you to know something. If you're not living for Him, you're still going to go through stuff. You might as well be on the winning side of this. Amen. You might as well be on the winning side. Praise God. If we will learn, listen to me, if we will learn to come and express gratitude, and I'm not saying you don't, but the more that you come to a place where you can open up to God, one of the best ways to get to a place where you can be used of God is to begin to, instead of letting the things you're going through bring you down, and I know it's tough, sometimes tougher than others, but instead of letting things bring you down and swallowing you up where you can't get that out of a church service, if you would just begin to praise God right. and worship God and lift Him up. Amen. And magnify him. Amen. And think on the things that he's promised you. Amen. And be grateful for it. Amen. That's right. Come on. You'll find out. Like Paul and Silas in the jail. They and they they were beat up, whipped, and all kinds of stuff, put in the inner prison and chains. And you know what? They knew something. They knew something. They knew uh, to go to crying and to feeling bad for themselves and all that. That wasn't the thing they needed to do. You know what they did? They started praying and singing praise to God. Right. And it changed the situation. Right. Their chains were dropped off of them. Not only their dear chains dropped off, but everybody that was bound. Amen. And the doors swung open. Amen. Amen. God. Amen. And the gifts of the Spirit started working. Amen. And Paul said, do yourself no harm to the jailer. How did he know that? That's the gift of the Spirit operating. The gift of knowledge. He knew that, that, that uh, jailer was thinking they killed kill himself. Instead of being tortured, <laughs> he's going to quit and take care of his yeah. And I'm, well, that's what I'm saying. If we will learn, listen to me, to come and magnify the Lord. I'm not saying you're not doing it. But listen to me. The more 
You open up Amen. and express yourself to the Lord. Amen. Come on. The more you do that, the more you get liberated. Amen. Come on. He's done some stuff for you. Come on. You know, I'm just trying to encourage you to get past yourself right. and get past your trials and get past your defeat. Amen. And come and realize, amen, you're on the winning team, amen. amen. Praise God and know, listen to me, you may not know what the answer to your problem is, but you know who is the answer to your problem. Amen. And you can yeah. praise him, amen, and let him work it out. Do your best and let him work it out. Amen. However he does it, just magnify him, amen. amen. I promise you, he will change it according to his will. Amen. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. Trust in him. Amen. Trust in him. Trust in him and praise him. And you'll find once you get liberated and consecrated to him, he will start using you. He will start working through you. You'll find yourself growing in God. And the next thing you know, you'll find yourself with whatever form of ministry he wants in your life. Give yourself to him. Give yourself to God. Don't just come to church and go out and be worldly. That's not helping you. You know what that does? Come to church and go out and be worldly? It condemns you. You feel condemned like that. And then you come back to church and you don't want to hang your head up. You don't want to raise your head. Right? No, come. Listen to me. If you get knocked down, get back up. Come on. If you get a spiritual bloody nose, I'll have plenty of them. Amen. Wipe it off. Amen. Wipe it off and live for Jesus. Stand with me. My time is over. My time is over. Praise God. Man, oh man. You got promise. Amen. When you live for the Lord. I feel sorry for people that's not in here. That's who I feel sorry for. For people that don't know. It's only people that's in Jesus that has hope. I didn't write that. I mean, it's what the Word says. I want to try to help somebody get in, don't you? So they can have the same promises. Amen. Amen. This whole world can drag you down if you in it without God. But when you've got God in your life, amen, you have hope. And it's not going to fade away. It's there, and you just stay in there with him, and you'll inherit it. It's there for you. It's guarded for you. Amen. Praise God. Do your best. Just live for him. Focus on him. Praise God. I better stop before I won't stop. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the time. Oh, Jesus, thank you for the time you've allowed us to have together. Great God Almighty, oh, let your, your Spirit, God, your Holy Spirit fall. God, quicken our minds and our hearts. Jesus, let the Word of God penetrate into our spirit, our inner man. Let us realize, Lord, the great things you have for us all. Oh, God, let us see it so clearly, Lord, like a treasure that's found in the field that a man will sell all he has to buy that field. Like that pearl of great price, God, that he'll sell all, the man will sell all he has to purchase that because he can seize the value that's there. Let us see that value, God. Let us clearly understand. Oh, God, and cleave to you and lift you up and magnify you as you're deserving of. You are deserving of it, Lord, because you didn't have to do all these great things, but you did them for us. And we thank you for it, Jesus. We give you praise for it, Jesus. We give you thanks for it, Lord, for all your goodness, Jesus. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for what you brought us into. talking to me about that. You know, man, I, they, were, they were telling my son the other day, John, and some other kids, you know, talking about it, saying, man, 
I'm so proud of them. It wasn't like that when it started. <laughs> you know, it wasn't that the one that said that the other day, but a lot of them called and they're asking for prayer now. Amen. Huh? Right. It, it, sometimes it takes some years. Amen. Amen. Because they watch your life. They watch your life. And in a world that's full of phonies, it's refreshing to see somebody that's real. Amen. And that's who you are. You're the real ones in the world. Amen. Those that the apostolic, real Christians, amen? And they need to see you. They need somebody that will stand. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You're dismissed. I'm sorry.